Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back down the rabbit hole. I am your host, Monty Hook, and I am in the studio in Bali. And today I'm joined by the lovely Rhonda Swan. For a, uh, for a, this is actually a round two. So we spoke about six months ago. Has it been that long? Yeah, it was like August or so. Now it's February, so about six months. Yeah. Right. And I wanted to catch up with you again wow. because that's like light years for me right now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I wanted to catch up with you because it seems like so much has changed in just a short amount of time uh, since we spoke. And last time, you know, we dug in a little bit. Uh, you shared your story about you know how you came to be the lioness mm. entrepreneur that you are. Yeah. And I think even in the last six months, in this last few months, you've kind of you've taken things to a whole other level. Your business has grown from probably at that time, it was what, 10 staff, mm -hmm. and now it's close to 50, is that right? Yeah. Right. So yeah. what the fuck's going on, Rhonda? <laughs> <laughs> well, the answer may not be what's expected. Yeah. I could go tactical, right? We can talk about operations and things like that, which yeah. has a lot to do with it. But to be completely transparent, yeah, I got out of my own fucking way, mm. and I opened Pandora's box of all the things that I thought were serving me, all my drivers that were causing me to be like a bulldog, so, and I let all that go. Yeah. So what was that getting in the way of before? Well, I was getting in the way of connection, of me being able to see a bigger vision. Like I, I can... I was always able to create any goal and hit, you know, any level that I wanted. I've been, I could literally say I, I probably have maintained that steady, squiggly, but always up line. But I wasn't super fulfilled and I wasn't creating really good connections and relationships as much as I wanted to. And so I'd find myself in um, like company growing and then it would only grow so far and it would like ease back in. And I kept finding myself really burned out doing the one that always is doing all the work. And it wasn't as flowing as I wanted it to be. Mm. And I realized it's because I was white knuckling so much. And I didn't think that I was. So you said so that you were actually blinded to some things like you had blinders yeah. on because you were just in go mode. Yeah. And I wanted everyone to be like me. And I realized that not everyone's like me. Yeah. Not many people are on that. No, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's what I find. About that's myself. a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and I, um, I, it's, uh, it's kind of funny to say, but I'll, I'll say it straight up. I really think I truly had a spiritual awakening. Yeah. And I've been spiritual all my life, but it's kind of been in the back door. I think we talked about this a lot last time. But my daughter, Hanalei, there was a draw that came from the need that she was emerging in her spiritual understanding. And I realized I had kind of put it to the back burner. I just allowed it to be part of me. And instead... I realized that I had been pushing that down because I, I think I was either afraid or I wasn't, you know, as comfortable. Yeah. And I started to open that Pandora's box, mm. if you will. There's a couple of things I want to dig into here. One is, yeah, the business, the operations, some tactics there, because you've actually made some really smart moves, mm -hmm. which is something that maybe you should have done before, but maybe it's something you didn't see. Yeah. Right. So I want to talk to, about that because I think that's really useful for, for people, what you've actually done yeah. tactically. Um, the other part is the, the the spiritual side. Or if it's okay, can we dig into that a little bit? Yeah. Now we have done some ceremonies together in the last six months. Yeah. I won't go into the details of what that what that is and what that's like. Um, but I've we've been part of each other's kind of spiritual journeys, I yeah. guess, in the past yeah. six months. And I've actually really witnessed you evolve, and I I would hope you've witnessed me evolve as well. Um, right. And but what I want to touch on here is that you've done a lot of work yeah like you've done a lot right so was that something that you felt called to do like or is it something that you you felt like something was missing so you wanted to jump into that or like why the depth that you've gone to well um yeah I, i've done a lot of work i mean it's been a pure dedication mm. and you know i'm kind of that style i either do it really really well or i don't do it at all and what I realized, the moment that I started tapping into just, it wasn't that I wasn't spiritual, that I didn't get it. It was that I was not embodying it. And I wasn't living my life as that guided temple, if you will, that, that, that literally allowed me just to completely beam in who I was. And I went deep because I found out that there's, and I didn't know any of this, there was ancestral healing that needed to be done 
throughout my lineage. Like my family is American Indian. I have American Indian background, um, Italian, and there was a lot of damage and healing that needed to go through. And I didn't really understand that. When people talk about healing, mm. I was like, okay, we're you know, going to heal some traumas because I didn't accept the things that I've gone through in my life. And I didn't think that, that the things that I went through in, just in my own life were causing and holding me back. Yeah. But even more importantly, the things that have happened in my past, like American Indian women. I When I did my first ceremony, I was I, I, I'm American Indian warrior woman came out of me. It was just like, ah, and I've always associated with Wonder Woman, like that's my power. And they, but they were fighters, like they were fighters. Mm. So I realized I that's who I was. That was I was this warrior, powerful woman, but I was fighting instead of being a warrior. It was, for, it was, force, it was forceful, forceful, and but that's. I'll, a her- a lot, my heritage, my ancestral heritage, these women have been, you know, American Indians, like raped, pillaged, all this suppression and all these things that they've gone through. I didn't know that can trail through our lives. Mm. My great grandmother was a medicine woman. She was like a Cherokee Indian a chief. So like, think about the ancestral lineage and what they've gone through. And that was coming through my family, my mom, my grandmother, all the way into me. And when I realized that this, I could bring this also into my daughter's life, is when I had the realization mm. that I needed to heal myself in order to stop all of this pain that I've been going through. And so my daughter can become sovereign. Yeah. And she didn't need to take it with her. But that, when that was brought up to me, I was like, whoa. Yeah. This is heavy. You know, like, what? Well, what I, what I love out of the, about this and the example that you, that you are through this, through this deep journey, is that. I mean, you're a powerful businesswoman. You were doing big things before, yeah. but what's crazy is you've five times oh what you're doing it's through this work. And usually, uh, there seems to be this. Uh, it's it's very easy to kind of look at the, the people in the spiritual world, the spiritual space, mm-hmm. and kind of go, you know, well, they're not doing anything with their lives. There seems to be this massive separation. Mm. So, as a successful entrepreneur, because it's the same for me as well, like I kind of just pushed it back. I yeah. saw, I had experiences when I was young, mm-hmm. and I always knew that there was more to life than you know what I what I what my senses can can see uh, and feel and touch and all of this. But I had, I know I suppressed that, and yeah. then. What's really interesting is tuning into into this, into this side side yeah. of ourselves. It just opens up, and you call it the vortex. Like you've opened up this this vortex, as yeah. you call it. And I just want to acknowledge you for being the example for that, because for that. it's. I, I feel like people almost feel like they need permission to pursue that, right? And I, I feel like, especially women, there's a lot of women who probably have this intuition and they have these feelings around that's something that they want to pursue. But there's so much pressure from society on, you know, to be successful. I've got yeah. to be a career person, and I've got to make money, and I've got to prove myself to the world. But you can have both. Actually, it's like it's tuning into this, which well, I think it was a trick, right? It was all this this big story that we were told. I mean, the reality is, right? We have been in you know such a patriarchy way of living, and I grew up in this, you know, male dominated world. And so in order to get ahead, I had to fight. And so that's the story, the bullshit story that we've been told as a female in order to get ahead, you got to be the power, you got to wear the power suit, you got to fight for this and do this. And I did all of that. Right. And, you know, it's kind of a joke to even consider now that like the equal opportunity uh, act, equal opportunity rights act in the United States, it's not even passed for women. Like it's, it, it blows my mind. Right. So the even fact that that's possible, but I think that's what happened. We were told all of this, these stories that that's who we need to be. And so instead of following the guided path, the spiritual path or my feminine path, I just went hard mm. because I was taught by men. I followed men. All the, the ones that were making money were men and I wanted to be like that. So I lost so much of my feminine side and I realized I got really hard. And without even knowing that that's how I was navigating, but it got me to as far as yeah. it needed me to well, go. It, home. It, cre- it created a, le- a, a level it's, of it's, success. Yeah, and I and this is and what a I, ceiling. Yeah, and this is what I want. Yeah, <laughs> tuning to the next question, which is that obviously that's that became a very strong part of your identity. Yeah, right. So what what have you noticed through this spiritual practice and ceremonies, and what what's unraveled for you, mm-hmm. and what 
another way of asking is, what's the view you have of yourself now that is different to before? That's a really good question. Um, what's unraveled for me is my connection to spirit, my connection to source. And it's not, I'm not the driver. When I'm opening up to what is coming from this, I mean, my goodness, living on this planet is so much energy, right? It's funny, I used to, I love the movie Avatar. I was like, oh, I wish we could live like that. We are Avatar, like we should be living that way, right? Which is connected to Mother Earth and what's given to us and the energy that, that we're provided with. I was living on this planet, right? Now I'm living within this planet. I'm, I'm connected to the source energy that I thought was super airy fairy. Mm. And, you know, being American Indian, my great grandmother and my family, like I was thinking if I see another uh, dream catcher, I'm going to barf. Like I'm just sick of these things. Like seriously, and I was so like this. But now what's happened is I'm really realizing all the judgments that I was putting on that because I wasn't really willing to tap in to that side. Mm. And I thought that I was going to be judged because I couldn't then become successful. All mm. I saw was you know, the airy fairies, if you will, and I'm not judging, but that's like a, you know, low, you know, statement to, to, to kind of, I guess, categorize people. And I, that's what I was doing. I was judging. And so what, when I started going through this journey, I really started seeing myself. I was confronting myself. I was confronting who I was to others. All the words that I was saying I was, I wasn't because I wasn't truly authentic. I had been hiding all the stuff that happened to me as a child, the sexual abuse, the, you know, the eating disorders, you know, like the, the, um, the image that I just didn't, I thought I loved of myself, but I didn't because it was all about, I was trying to be something for everyone else. Mm. And when I let all that go, and I mean, that was, took a lot of time. That was a process, you yeah. know, to, to be able to face yourself and say, who really are you for the world? Who are you for your daughter? Do you want her to be like this hard ass businesswoman that makes money and just charges through? Like, and that's what kept showing up for me. Yeah, that's really powerful. Let me ask you this. So a, a lot of people who might be watching this, they might think that the stuff that we've done is pretty extreme, which it probably is. Like probably. we've dropped ourselves in the, jung in the jungles, <laughs> more or less, yeah. right? And gone really deep, really, you know, really yeah. hard without, without question, yeah. right? What could other people who are maybe listening to this going, you know, something here resonates. You mm -hmm. know, there's something for me to explore here. Yeah. What's something that people could do to start to tune into this, do you think? Do you I think meditate. it's do you, okay. So do you think it's a good idea to drop yourself in into the ceremony or the jungle I or do, whatever? I'm you know, I'm hardcore like that, right? Like yeah. you are. I needed to be immersed in it. Like I don't I can never yeah. put my toe into something. I'm just very mindful of the fact that maybe it's not right for everybody. Maybe well, yeah, it's not right. Yeah, because it could freak some people out. Yeah. Right? Because it is extreme, right? To go into that space and where you're in a you're in a ritualistic ceremony and you're sitting up all night and you're focused and you're praying to the fire and you're connecting to source and you're letting the ancestors come in like that's just intense. People might be going, whoa, like you want to say you're a fairy. That's like wild, right? So I think, um, yeah, we went super extreme. However, I think just starting to listen to yourself and right now more than ever, Monty, like the world is so fucked up mm -hmm. and there's so much pain that people are going through. And I really think more people need to just start looking back and tracking back. Like what were the things that stopped them from joy, yeah. like joy, like real, true happiness and joy. And I think there's a lot more pain that we've gone through. I mean, I have now a spiritual teacher that I work with every couple of weeks, you know, and I never thought I'd say that, mm. you know, I mean, we went in, I was in 16 weeks every other week in a, in a ceremony for 16 weeks. Yeah. So you, you mentioned just before, meditation is an, mm -hmm. is an access yeah and this is where it's very counterintuitive right yeah. to think all right i'm gonna sit still yeah and i'm you know i probably got a a personality a little bit like you which has been pretty extreme at times and go hard and the idea of sitting still to create more is very counterintuitive yeah right but as you mentioned before the world's you know been in, in, in something of a mess and 
I think this idea of sitting still, sitting in meditation, creating some rituals in your life, yep. presence, gratitude, just more and more of that allows you to tune into what's most important and then be in a space, be in a place of where you can, you, you can, uh, you, you can do more. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest is really, um, I didn't have a ritual, right? Mm. So now I've got my altar, I've got me, you know, I've got my, my elements, yep. you know, um, you know, the earth, water, fire and, and air. And every morning I give gratitude. Yeah. Every morning I come out and I give gratitude. I pray to creator. Thank you. I pray to mother earth. Thank you for what we've got. I ask for the spirits of Bali to like support us. It's like, just that feeling, and you know, and it's it's interesting. I I met I went away by myself between Christmas and New Year, by myself in nature, no one else but me and my dog. I had Hape, the fire, and my dog, and that was it. Mm. No people, no phones, nothing. And I met a monku there though, and he's the monk who's like the priest here in Bali. And I met him one day. He came over, and we did a prayer with me. And he said, "You know, it's really interesting. Um, religion." is like a boat. And once we get on the boat and it takes us to the other side of enlightenment, we no longer need the boat. So I feel like this conversation, some people might construe it as religious or, mm. right? But I, I grew up in a Christian family and I was forced to read, I've read the Bible three times, I've memorized every verse in the Bible and I was forced. And at, I remember being young going, this doesn't make any sense. Like, why would this God not like this guy because his color? Why would this God, this does not make any sense. Like, I don't like this. However, the religion gave me a foundation of connection, but it was such a negative way. Mm. That's why I think I fought it. So now people, like initially I was like pushing away an altar, right? And this prayer and the word, when we started doing ceremonies, like we're here to pray. And I'm like, yeah, the same like it for, felt same, weird. Same for me too. Same right. For me. I was super triggered. Yeah. And then what I realized that the prayer is about your connection to creator. You're praying for your life. You're praying for how you can stay connected to this source and be a better embodiment, leave more impact on other people's lives. And I'm praying for my family. And like, I'm a praying machine now, right? Because, but it feels so good because I know that it's a, it's a direct connection to, to the source and the creation. And so I think that big thing for people is just adding in a little bit of a ritual. Yeah. And, and this know? is what I really love about the ceremonies yeah. because they're run, they're run with such sacredness. Yeah. Right. And then Held meticulous, the tightest meticulous. Yeah, that's what I liked about it. That's what I love about it. Because our entrepreneurship wanted it to be tight. Then yeah. it, like the spirit was around it, but it was because it was so respected. Yeah. And what I love is you, you kind of sit there and, the meticulousness of it, you get to witness where you are not that in your life. Exactly. Right? Yes. And I kind of go. You're, like the sitting up, yeah. all of a sudden you're like this, doing the slouch. It's like, you can't sit up for 12 it, hours. It seems like such a small thing. It's huge. But you really get to see how you show up in your life every day. That's it. And this is where I think the idea of the rituals and the mm -hmm. praying and it keeps you in that space. It keep, keeps keeps you in check. And whatever yeah. people's versions are of that, yeah. it doesn't have to be anything like what yeah. like we've done. Yeah. But just that process um, every day of that gratitude yeah. and the prayer. And, and I felt this shift. I mean, I can truly say, like, my whole life changed. Like, I was already new. Like, I was already in tune with my spirituality and my intuition. And I would say, look, I'm a spiritual realist. I got this. I embody it. However, I started when I started to expand it, and connect to the past and start going, wow, that stuff in visualizing in meditation, like seeing ancestors, the crying, the weeping, the pain, and like letting it go and, and forgiving people, like letting these things go from my body, I realized like how much more powerful I was. I was being weighted down. And so when I started to keep like my vortex, I call it like, this energy cycle, the people I wanted around me, how I, how I showed up like from the ceremony, then those that I was around me, how they were showing up. And all of a sudden I'm creating this epic vortex. And from that, I not only felt better, I looked better. I got younger. Like if you look at a clip from my, let's see, probably six months ago when you interviewed me, I'm like, I think I look like a completely different person yeah. because I just, how I was showing up, my body was heavy. I yeah. was like, right. Cause I was worn out. And it could also be the eyes that you're viewing yourself through now as well. Exactly. Yeah. Right. It's really interesting. It, it is. And, and, and because of that, my business started to explode. 
how I was showing up to clients, the way I was dealing with situations, mm. like stuff just wasn't phasing me anymore. And I knew because, you know, I was like, look at creator, you want to give me the, the, you know, the, the, all the abundance, I will use it for good. I will use it for good. I'll give it to this charity. I'll give it to this. I'll support this goodness. Give I'll people jobs. Give people jobs, right? I will do that. And I will hold myself to ultimate, you know, integrity. Mm. And it's working. Yeah. <laughs> it's really working. Yeah. All right. Well, now that we're at this at, at this point, let's talk about the business a little bit mm -hmm. and what what has uh, what has come about in, in the last six months. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I've observed is, and I, I I think we talked about it in in the last one, was uh, systems and organization, etc. Yeah. What has really supported you is you bringing somebody in who's kind of really high level who sees the vision, who really gets you mm -hmm. and has basically taken over that side of the business so that you can just focus on nothing but being Rhonda, yeah. right? Yeah. So talk us through this because I think this is really yeah. powerful. This is a big transition. Yeah. And what do you, and the second part of that is what, like, did you not know that before? Do you think that this is now just new because you get to see it through, you know, no, new I eyes? did. This is like what I said earlier. I got ah, out of my own way. Yeah. Meaning, so you I knew pushed you my needed ego this before. out of the way because I thought if the only way it's going to get done well, it's going to be I done do by me. Yeah. And 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 I no one could do it the way I wanted it. No one could do it right. And everyone was doing it wrong. And I was pissed mm. at my husband. And I didn't want to work with this guy. So I, it was all just me. Yeah. And I would just take it all on. I got out of my own way. And I realized what my limitations were, I saw what my strengths were and what my limitations were. And I got really honest with myself. Like, first off, do you like yourself? Do you like the outcomes that are happening around you? Do you want to continue like this? Can you continue like this? Are you being the example for your daughter? Are you being an example for other women? Like, are you actually teaching women how to build and be an empowered business? Or are you teaching them how to burn out? Mm -hmm. And I got really clear when I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, what do you need? I need someone to help me with my systems and organizing yeah. to look over, look at what was going on. And I had dabbled in the systems, but when you're in it, you can't quite see it. Yeah. You can't see the picture when you're living inside the frame. Yeah. And I was <laughs> so good. And I wasn't willing to put the money up for it either. Yeah. And I finally said, look, I'm going to invest in someone else's knowledge. Yeah. And trust and, and trust. trust. Yeah. That's what I actually learned in my yeah. ceremonies. Yeah. That I can actually Ooh. trust. Yeah. That's good. Oof. That's deep. And and I just want to kind of tie this in for people to make it really tangible for people. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, because not everybody has a business with 50 people, right? Yeah. Or at the stage that you, because you were already making good money. Yeah. Like, let's be clear. Yeah. We were seven and you had, plus. And you had the resources to kind of tune into that. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people, maybe they're not at that financial kind of stage. But to me, it's it's still the same, right? You Whatever version of the next step is in that trust in putting, you know, bringing other people on board, whatever version is for them, what's right for them in, in, in their business at the mm -hmm. time, they've got to make the bet. They've got to yeah. like double down and, and hand over that and give people responsibility and trust in other people and have the idea that there's people that are smarter than me and I need to bring them into the business. Yeah. Well, it's just like that whole, you know, saying when you're in an airplane, put your, your oxygen mask on first, right? And that's really what I needed to do is like, I needed to support myself and then look, okay, what is it? Where am I gapping? Right. And that was my big thing. Like, where is it that you're gapping? Like what, where are the holes? And my holes were that in order for me to scale, I actually needed to have a better operational system. Like yeah. I had to have a system that didn't need me. See, I was the bottleneck. Yeah. And you and I had had this conversation years before. Like, I've known you for six years, and you were talking about this stuff. And I thought I had done it at a certain level, but everything needed me. Mm. So you, you had manufactured everything, so it still needed to pass through you in some small yeah. way. I had to check off, approve things. Yeah. Everything had to be done by me. I had, you know, still 10 Which, employees. Uh, uh, okay, so here, here's, a, here's an interesting tangent, because you have a, you have a responsibility to your brand as well, for right? Sure. Yeah. So. You, it's 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 important to make sure everything is done well and it is done by the brand. Yeah. So how, how, how 
like how what was the thing that allowed you to uh give trust in that because the brand is you yeah like and this is where i think a lot of people get stuck is because there's so much responsibility that they feel to the brand that everything's got to be done just this way yeah. That's a that's a tough thing for people to overcome. It is, and it's, it's it's also you know I build brands, right? So that was like such a big thing. I've built this, you know, this legacy brand, which has started with our unstoppable family, right? Unstoppable family. So it was our values. It was who we were as human beings, and as a family, and freedom, and all that you know good stuff. And then here I started to build all these other unstoppable products and brands underneath it. So when my company, I went on my own and I told my husband, look, um, him and I have been working together for so long and it really wasn't working. Like it was like constant clash because it wasn't that he wasn't working because now he works with me and it's amazing over the last six months. I had been like, yeah, you're doing it wrong, right? And I wanted to be that, you know, mm -hmm. person. And so, but what happened is we had to maintain the credibility of the brand. We had to maintain like what I, how I showed up. Yeah. Right. And once we got that down, and then I was able to find someone that entrusted in that I, because I stayed in the front. Right. I, ha I still stayed in the front. So when I brought in our COO, who's now our partner, I said, look, this I need because I was hurting my own brand because I wasn't being able to take care of people at the highest level because it was all just me. Mm -hmm. So I was actually diminishing my brand when I needed to have these systems in place to help polish it, if you will, yeah. to bring it back. That's really interesting to, to bring somebody in to feel and see the vision that exists with you. Yeah. Like that's powerful. That's really, that's really powerful. And what's really cool here is for people, for you to show people that vision, yeah. you've got to be the best version yeah. of yourself. Yeah. Right. And that's how it started. I started going to ceremonies and I got really focused mm. and that's when I started calling them in. I was yeah. like, okay, that's when I started calling him in. So because of my consistency and the work that I was doing and just the pure dedication to who I was, how I was showing up, that's what made the transition so much easier, Yeah. right? So like it, a lot of it came in like a perfect weave and flow because I was asking for this. I'm like, if you want, truly want to embody who you are, to be an example for women, to show other families that they can create a business and a life that they love, to put, you know, our company's PR and branding, right? So like to be able to help to tell people's story, you've actually got to be open enough to tell your own yeah. and you've got to trust enough to let that grow. And so that's really when I started to open up and, yeah. and let the, and that's, and the shells down, yeah, and armor down. <laughs> what's really cool here is because, and let's, let, let me just give some context to, to people about your business and yeah. what you what you do. Yeah. Um, because for those of you who don't know you, uh, Unstoppable Branding Agency, you actually help people uh, with PR, help them get published in really high, high level uh, publications like Forbes and Entrepreneur Magazine and, and stuff like this. Um, and your the th very thing that you're you're helping people with is the thing that you had to kind of really embrace, embrace. the most mm -hmm. embrace the most yeah yeah and you know what's interesting too is that you know um because right now especially you know leveraging you know google indexing your name and having your your story told in top tier publications is like the next level from we know social media and marketing for companies is probably going to it's fading it's mm. just kind of a it's going to falter away but one thing it's not is online real estate your name google indexing you being showcased as the expert right yep. so that's what we we've been building however what i realized i was telling my own story and i've been published over 40 50 times I was telling such a contrived story before. Mm. You mean like uh, forced with too much what, strategy and too much tactic? And what I thought people wanted to yeah, hear. Yeah. Right. So right? You, you were writing for what you thought the thought, market wanted. Right. And I, you know, I know the market, right? Yep. The moment I started to soften up my edges, <laughs> like and I started to talk about the real things, like I never talked about anything personal, really spiritual yep. as much, right? I was a lot more, you know, like kept it in. <laughs> Like everything started to shift because mm. I came real. Everyone thought I was a machine. Yeah. I didn't even realize I had become a machine to everyone. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like you don't even realize when you get to that point, right? And I'm literally acting on like a machine. And the moment that I started to soften up those edges is the moment that 
the business started to grow. Mm. People started to connect more. They started to realize it. And I started to see their stories in a different way. Yeah. You know, and then my relationships are improving. My friendships are improving. I'm not pissed at anyone anymore because mm-hmm. I'm like, really doesn't matter. The house is not burning down. It's all your stuff. How I react is my karma. How yeah. you treat me is yours. So I'm good. And this is stuff that I already believed in. Like, I thought I was living it. Yep. But I wasn't embodying it. And literally, it's like things started to shift. So when I bring my partner in, he's like, okay, this is what I found. This is the gaps. We started hiring people like Matt. Like, we set the systems together. And he's like, look, this is the gap. We need to get you out. We need you to keep being Rhonda. You stay in the front. You be the vibration, the heartbeat. Everything you've been building, you just shouldn't be the one ticky-tacking in the background. Because I was doing it all, right? Marketing, ads. I mean, I was doing it all. And when I started to trust that, but obviously I had to really embody my story. People needed, they came in, yeah. they needed to know our values. Like I have everyone sign the five agreements, uh, Don Miguel Ruiz, yeah. everyone signs it. When they come in as an employee, they get their contract and they all sign, I will do my very best. I will not take things personally. Mm-hmm. You know, I will listen, but I'll be skeptical. Like I, they all sign it because I realized like if I'm going to bring in people that are in our vortex, yep. they got to be in the same frequency as I'm yep. at. And that was what I learned, you know, in our ceremonies. Yeah. People that are on the same frequency, they slowly just fade well, off. What's what's cool here is obviously as entrepreneurs, growing a business, growing a team, we know the importance of culture. Yeah. But it, it can become so tactical, right? Yeah. And kind of almost empty and meaningless and very strategic. Yeah. Right? But what you've tuned into is this really authentic self which then is just overflowed into the brand and into the business, which then becomes this mechanism of like attracting people who really see the vision, feel the vision. Yeah. And they're just so bought in. I mean, it's funny though. I, you know, this, I just was like, look, anyone that's working for me, if they're working here locally, you need to come into a TP with me. You need to come to a ceremony. Anyone that I know that I might do business with later, we need to be thinking on the same level. Yeah. And I tell you, I, I brought in over 70, maybe 80 people yeah. through that ceremony just in the last So it's like a job interview. <laughs> That's really cool. But the lives, right? The, yeah. I mean, look at the transition you've had. Yeah. Your life is completely, oh, yeah. you're a completely different guy. Yeah. Just so people know, like what it has given me, just people might be interested is the, the 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 softening is the is the yeah. it's like we get so stuck in this identity that because i created success i was already a successful guy but there's a ceiling to that right it can only get you so far and then exponential growth has to come from another place and where it comes from is the unlearning that the unraveling it's like almost fully deconstructing yeah. yourself so that you can you can see different you can see differently, right? Yeah, it's and you become a lot more attractive. Yeah, easier. I was not. I was told. No one told me this until after that they're afraid of me. I was unapproachable. Mm. I was like, really? I'm like a pretty jolly person. Like your energy is big, and we love your energy. It's overwhelming for people. It was overwhelming for people, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, like it was almost unapproachable. Yeah. I was like, wow, did I really do that? People don't tell you that stuff until they yeah. have to. <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting. I just, it just kind of, it just came to me to take this in a different direction yeah. because what I know you to be the example of is a, a powerful woman, successful woman, driven, but now you've tuned into this different side of your femininity mm-hmm. and, and this flow, et cetera. Um, with all the things that have kind of, happened in the world in the last 12 months Mm. i just happen to think that what the world needs more of is feminine leadership and that doesn't necessarily have to be from women like Mm -hmm. it needs men to kind of tune in more to that feminine and for a lot of men that's going to sound weird but we all have feminine we all have masculine and i just it's it it, well it's a different form of leadership it's not even yeah yeah, it's it's not a male or a female it's actually the way that you lead it's how you see things and you know a bit more compassion and understanding Mm. yeah right and a more connection because you know we are pulsing you know connection to to the energy that's in this planet right and if things are so hard that's why things were breaking down that's why everything's breaking down because it's like 
all this force, this forced energy and this control and this demand, it isn't working anymore. Yeah, and it's th that season is over. Over. And, but there's people still trying to hold on to it. Of course. And, and, and they're uh, going to combust. Exactly. They're going to exactly. combust. Yeah. And the companies that have been run that way are combusting. Yeah. And people are wising up. They're realizing like, I don't need to be talked to that way. And consumers are, are, are demanding d different things. I heard a really interesting statistic. I don't know if you've heard this. From the World Economic Forum, for every $1 that they give women to, uh, like for charities and, um, and for business, they create $7. Seven dollars. And then they give it to men and they lose three. Yeah, yeah I, um, I've been researching this quite a bit. In fact, I was just interviewed about that, that um, by 2025, we allow more feminine energy and women to be in business. We'll add over $1.5 trillion into the GDP. Just by that statistic and, and And in a healthy way. Healthier way. In a healthy way. More open, more connected, more nurturing. And that's actually what's happened in my company. Yeah. I'm so much more nurturing. Yep. than a driving force. Yep. Like the other day, some one of the girls was kind of stressed. Was like, take a break. Take a day off. It's okay. Our house is not burning down, right? And the fact that you can actually say that to people and know that like the world, there's the, the energetic pressure that's going on right now, people are kind of freaking out, right? And they don't even know why. You know, so to be aware of that, that's a part of that feminine energy of understanding and knowing like, Okay, there's a, you know, there's a lot of stress going on right now. Let's all, you know, let's all meditate or do your thing right now. Like get back into the space that connects you to what, you know, is, is truly matters and and that's I think the way that the world is going to guide and that's where our economies will grow. I mean, we are at a, a you know, awakening of a new dawn. Yeah. Like there are light workers and, and 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 there's that feminine energy of conscious leadership that is just it's exploding. And all of this side, this tough control is trying to hold on to it. You can't stop it though. Mm -hmm. It's greater. It, 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 it's exponentially growing. It's like a battery, yep. right? Where that's a draining battery, you know? And I, it's like, I, there's such a duality right now and I'm seeing that happening. And, you know, even like the new generations, my daughter's 13, these new generations, they're listening to different music. It's not that da, 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 that yeah. hard stuff, that like negative shoot. Like I grew up in Detroit. Like I grew up with some hardcore stuff, <laughs> right? And it was like, yeah, yeah. But the way people talk to each other, these kids don't talk to each other like that. Yeah. They're very conscious. They, they're very caring, you know, and it's just they're, they're, they're – And they really care they about the planet. Care, really about, the care planet, about the planet, right? Because we grew up and, I mean, it was like out the window throwing, a, you know, your, your chips bag out. How horrible to even think that we yeah. did that. You know, like what? That's like literally now you see someone, you're like, oh, I can't yeah. believe you're still doing that. You know, but they're just more, they're more self-acknowledged and they're just more awake and they're more connected. Now, most of them, but I realize if I, um, if I didn't change, I could have had to harden my daughter. Mm. And my spiritual teacher said, the reason why your spiritual awakening is happening right now is because Hanali needs you the most right now. Yeah. And, I, you know, because... Which you is what the world needs. And by the way, Hanali is such a great example for the yeah. future, future of the planet. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, if, if we have her as a leader in this world, like, I feel very confident and optimistic about the planet. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So you do have a big responsibility. A and, big responsibility. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And getting, I thought I'm, I was living up. I'm I know, right? Like and, oh, too. shit. It's a big responsibility, yeah. you know? And it's funny, um, a really good friend of ours said to me after a ceremony the next day, he's like, Rhonda, you have something way bigger to do than mm. you're doing right now. Do you know that? You have something way bigger. I've said that to you. Right? Yeah. You have too. Yeah. It kind of confronted me, right? Because I'm like, I can always do that. I'm like, what is, what is, what, 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 what can I do? What more? And that's when um, he said to me, you need to get out by yourself. You need to get out of, you need to go away by yourself. Mm -hmm. And that was right before Christmas. And he's like, you need to get in nature. You need to sit with yourself. And you just need to be with yourself and let all this stuff that's been transmuting, that you've been learning, this ancestors and what we've been doing in ceremony and the connection, let it all come in. And I was like, I don't leave for a week? I got responsibilities, I got my family, I got this, I'm with this. all that distractions that were trying to stop me. I went, wait a minute. In order for me to step 
back in, I got to step out to step back in. Mm -hmm. And in order for me to truly embody what I'm doing, what I'm saying, I got to take care of myself. And so I went and I went away and the messages that were coming through to me, I have never gone so deep in so many different realms, like dimensions, meeting, you know, indigenous Just through meditation. Just through meditation and hape, which is, you know, tobacco and uh, ash from spiritual tree that's been collected. Because hape really just helps you, like, brings you straight in, allows you to focus and clear your mind. Completely blew me away. Like, I thought seven days would feel like hell. I, I, you know, I'd start at six in the morning and I'd go to bed by 10 o'clock at night and I couldn't believe the day was over. Yeah. Being completely alone, not one person, no phone, nothing. It was the best thing I could ever do for myself. <laughs> yeah, and like I said before, it seems so counterintuitive right? to, to, to do that. And there's so much talk in the world now of like doing big things and making an impact. And, mm -hmm. and the way to really tune into what is your higher purpose and that thing is to sit still and listen. Yeah. And feel it. Yeah. And actually really, really feel it. And that's what I did. I really had to like be afraid, be excited, you know, um, and just really feel what was coming through. And I realized, yeah, you've got you've got a responsibility. Yeah. You know. So what what can do you, can you share? Like what came to you? Oh like did, did you get did you get some kind of message about what the can you articulate the bigger picture or is it? Yeah, I mean, there was some um, moments where I was taken to um, on the on a beach by my spiritual spiritual guide, which is a a white horse, and uh, took me to the beach. And there was an indigenous man sitting by the fire, singing rituals ritualistic uh, rattle songs. There was a, 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 a an American Indian woman, if you will, an indigenous woman. And they were chanting, and I sat, I was like, I was lucid. I was sitting right next to them, and they were praying, and they were singing to the ancestors, they were calling in the spirits, and I felt like I was there. And he turned to me, and he handed me an emerald. And he said, you are guided. You need to stay on the guided light. And crazy enough, I just got that lion tattoo, and I have one color, it's a green emerald uh -huh. on her forehead. He gave me this emerald. And he said, you need to take this. You need to find where this is leading you to. And then, you know, my mind goes like yellow brick road. I'm like, where am I going with this, you know, this emerald? And then from there, it took me, walked me through the jungle, the forest. I was feeling the, the ground, uh, the branches, and, and I was being guided by a panther. It took me into Shiva's temple. And I'm standing there, I'm like, what is, I mean, I was there. And I said, Shiva, you know, what do I do with this? And Shiva, with all his arms, came down and, and said, you are protected. You are safe. And that's the one thing that I never had because mm. my father wasn't there with me. I never felt the real support from men. Yep. And my husband's dad died when he was very young, so we didn't have that, like, mm. that side of him to embody that. And I was afraid that I was never been protected because I was always the one. I got this by myself. I don't need anyone. Right? That was what I was living in. And she like I said, you've got this. You are protected. And gave me a key. So I got this key, skeleton key, and I got this emerald. I said, now you need to go. And you need to walk. Yeah. And you have the key. You can unlock anything yeah. that you want, especially inside of yourself. And I'm like, this is heavy. Like, yeah. It was so heavy. I was so exhausted. I came out of this meditation, panther, or yeah, a jaguar, walk, black jaguar walked me back through. I went back into my sacred space because like I was visualizing here I am in my sacred space. I walk out and I was like, what just happened? Like I, could, I had to start writing it down because it was so intense and so vivid that I couldn't even believe what I had experienced. And um, I was reading this book the dark side of the light chasers at the same time. I was given that. My spiritual teacher said, read the dark side of the light chasers. And it's about seeing your shadows. It's about identifying, you know, your subpersonalities, things that, 
and I was reading that book at the same time. And um, so she kind of guides you through a lot of stuff that you're, that you're going through. And that was one of them, that a spiritual guide's going to show up. And when a spiritual guide shows up, what, what does that represent? Who is it? Shiva represented all of the arms and love of the, 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 the support that I never had. I felt so like just confident and supported and so free. And the indigenous, you know, elders were like my ancestors saying, you've had this all along. Like you are, you have this support from us, but you are supported by men. Mm. And it's okay. But go out, drive the force like a female, but know that you have the masculine to support you. And I was like, I never talk like this. Like, you know what I mean? I never said I'd rely on a man, you know? Like, yeah, that was my thing. Yeah. And like, no, it's not about relying on a, a man. It's about em embracing yeah. both sides. So that was really deep. Yeah, that's deep. And uh, <laughs> you uh, people are like, whoa. Not, not just, I mean, not just deep from the, the, your perspective of that depth, but the, the, the lessons there Symbolism, for, yeah. for everybody yeah. is really is uh, is well, for women especially yeah for women especially yeah. well and for men to to support women in, in that way because the we live in this world where there's so much confusion between men and women and masculine yeah. and feminine and and the power struggles yeah right? the power struggles yeah yeah that's really cool yeah and and realizing that there is doesn't need to compete yeah you can both be powerful that's why there's a king and a queen yeah like you can literally yeah right run your own queen and kingdom uh and that's what i've been able to embody and that's why my husband and my relationship is so different like i totally accept him for who he is yeah. and now i see his he was probably always there for me yeah i just didn't see it mm. you know and um yeah, so much growth has come from that. And then, of course, you know, my business partner, most of my companies run by women. It's like 80% women. My business partner came as the COO, and he's, um, you know, obviously a man. And, however, he's got a lot of feminine sides to him. Yep. So he balances out the way I ran it. And we did um, human design. Did you ever do human design? Uh, somebody did it for me, like, just a couple of days yeah, ago. Yeah, me too, just recently. Yeah. So I'm a, a manifesting generator. That's what I am. You yes. knew it. I knew we were the same. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> so funny I don't know everything about it but I know yeah. like it, it was run him and I this is so rare uh, exact it was an exact match especially for business exact match so for partners it's couples it's like what but for a business partner for two people normally you need like four yeah. people in a co corporation exact match everything I I didn't have he had everything I had. And has, that he, he didn't, has he done the human design? We did, we were uh, exact match. Uh, she couldn't believe it. She was like, this has completely blown me away. You guys fulfill on every single missing piece. Yeah. And so that's also part of, I think, why things have just worked because it's been in, in complete flow. But that's, you know, mm. like that's these kind of things that, you know, as chargers and entrepreneurs, you just don't look at those type of things. Yeah. But they really matter. Yeah. The way we're designed as a human, the way that we're brought up, the way that we're addressing things in our life actually matter to the outcome of your businesses. Yeah. Especially now, especially now more than ever. This more is not the, not the 80s. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I want to be respectful yeah. of, of, of your time, um, but this has been super, wow. super insightful. Has it already been an hour? It's, it's we're about 50, Jeez, 50 minutes like, or so. Wow, that's... I was like, are we really going to be able to go for an hour? He's like, <laughs> well, we could do this probably for hours. Uh, yeah, you have days. For hours. <laughs> um, but uh, how, how can people find you? Um, the, I, I encourage everybody to go and check out you and Unstoppable Branding Agency yeah. and what you're doing because you actually have some really interesting insights into, I think, what's happening in the world in the digital space. Yeah. Let's, let's just let's touch yeah, on that sure. a, a little bit mm -hmm. on what you see mm -hmm. because – you mentioned before that social media is kind of going to fade out a little bit um, and what's, you know, what still works, which didn't really ever go away, but people shifted their attention to social. What are you, what are you seeing in that? And you're also connected to some very high profile people, yeah. some really big yeah. entrepreneurs doing amazing things in the world. Yeah. So you've got some, probably some, some insights, pulse, yeah. some insights that other people yeah. may not have. So what are you seeing? Yeah, well, we started to pick this up a couple of years ago on just the trends of where things were going, right? Ads were getting more expensive. And for me, like social media and ads were like a quick fix. So everyone stopped from that 
you know, that foundational building of a brand, which is like SEO and, you know, you know, making sure that the, you're building really quality content, mm. right? And so we flipped to this social media age. But now I started to see this a couple of years ago and I started to watch the trends and what's happening and where credibility is lying, right? Everyone's looking for a credible source. And so what we're starting to see is that, I mean, if you look at this sea, we always, I say the differences between swimming in a red sea or swimming in a blue sea. And now more than ever, everyone's dumped into the Red Sea. Yeah. So how are brands and companies and founders and, and uh, experts positioning themselves differently? And we've been leveraging top tier publications for several years. But we started to do something quite different where we were seeing these the digital magazines as being like one of the greatest resources only for credibility, but for Google indexing your name and being connected on the domain rating, meaning a site that's got like high credibility um, and connecting your name to that. And we started to leverage those as marketing material, right? So I was already tapping into this. Well, now it's, we're seeing the trend that like some of the, the top of the top right now that are looking at speakers, authors, like who are, how are we deciding who we're working with? They are now Googling people's name and they're looking to see if you have a knowledge panel, no. which means it's all the data about you. So like if you Google your name or mine right now. So that's when, you, like if you look up a movie star, yeah, for sure boom, gonna, it's going to be there. It's their picture. It's their name. Yeah, it's yeah. all of their links. It's all of their socials. It's all of their websites. It's books. It's everything that they've done. Like that mm. is the absolute credibility stamp that says that you've, you are a credible resource and you're an expert in this craft. And the next level is going and getting a Wikipedia, right? Which is yeah. also now what we're building for, for our clients. But that's what they're looking for now. So they're Googling your name. They're hitting the news tab, which says this is who's talking about you right now. And they're looking at the, the knowledge panel. That's all they're looking at. Yeah. Because social media is going to, if it goes away, all you have is your name and what's been written about you yeah. and your credibility. And this content. is where it ties back in, I think, to the rest of the conversation is that Social media has been this place where people can fake it to the make it. And there's a lot exactly. of fake. There's a lot of stuff, right? That phase is gone. And what's happening in the world, tying back into everything that we're talking about, is this dissolving of that and needing to go back to authenticity, right? And that, I feel, is what is the movement. That's it. And that's where you're at. And that's what you're tuning that's into. That's exactly what we're tapping into is like real truth. Yeah. Because you can't. I can't make a knowledge panel. I can't mess with the algorithms. We have, but you have to do it right. And you have to have the right steps, the right tiers, the right credibility. Like uh, mm. Google just um, blocked like fifty thousand publications. There's so much garbage PR. There's people like I can help you do this. It's most of it's garbage, yeah. right? We are literally. I'm like I'm working with celebrities right now to push down some of the crap that maybe they had for years ago and rebuild their brand because we have to do it the right way. And this is the long term play. Yeah. This is like the long-term money, like looking at how do you want to be searched for? Like what are the key, key words? Just like on YouTube, if you're searching for, you know, how to build a business online and you are searching for that, you're going to see certain people because they're key word ranking. You need to be able to have that also on Google that pulls you up in your website as that credible source. Yep. And that's where the juice is right now. It's not social, it's not Facebook ads. Yeah, that's, you know, like instant gratification stuff. It's yeah. traffic. But the juice is coming from the base, which where it all started. Yeah. But we got like lazy because yeah. marketers came in, right? And started figuring out social media and started paid ads. And they stopped doing all the quality stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is really, uh, I, I love how we're, we're finishing on something really tactical. Yeah. But it's actually tied in. It's yeah. actually tied into all the rest of it. That's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, so Unstoppable. Branding Agency. And your. And, and Rhonda Swan. Rhonda Swan. Yeah, Rhonda easy. Swan. It's the easiest place to find me. I'm certainly you search for me. You should look me up so you can see this knowledge panel, what it is. Yeah. Um, you know, because that's <laughs> that's what everyone's coming to me for now. They're like, what? You know, it's not even about this blue tick anymore. Yeah. You know, like there's certain ways you can get that stuff. That's so vanity. It doesn't even mean anything anymore, especially for yeah. entrepreneurs. You know, unless you've done something major. This is really cool because, like, and I know of like there's podcasters as an example yeah. who are blown up on the podcast channels. They get the listens. They get the views. But they don't have all that social media presence because that it can be so fake. It's, it's all fake, and it's van Most of it yeah. is now becoming fake and vanity. Yeah. So I, I, um, the blue tick is such a big thing. We do help our clients get there. In fact, I restarted my whole blue tick process six months ago because I could have gotten it, and they were gonna like you know just yeah I'll give it to you. And I said no, I'm gonna do it the right way. 
I'm going to get all of the exact publications, the articles, because you could buy, pay for it. Yeah. See, so they'll say, oh, I know this guy internal. You can pay for it. And that's what so many people are doing. Mm. It's all blah, blah, blah. But then you look at him, you're like, does this guy have a knowledge panel? No. Has he written a book? No. Like, you know to, to see which is garbage or not. But it's fine because that's what people are doing. But that's why we know what the base, what it works, what's really working. And the people that have been producing high quality content that are known for what they're doing, they're people who could care less if they have a blue tick. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you just know who you are. You don't need... <laughs> A blue tick to tell you that you are, yeah. because that's just social media stuff, and that's I'd rather be Google verified than yeah. social media verified, really. Yeah, I got one final question for you. But before we do that, I just want to mm. acknowledge you because, yeah, as I mentioned before in the start, I mean you're such a great example for what's possible, especially mm. for women, with really uh, tuning into this flow and this actual power, yeah, and this feminine feminine power, and. Like I feel like we've touched on some really interesting insights for the direction of the world and the direction of humanity, mm -hmm. and giving people permission because, like, I think people feel they have this intuition about this stuff, but they just push it, push it away. So when somebody really Listen. powerful steps up and does this on the depth that you've done it, it's a beautiful example. Mm. So thank you, thank you for that. Um, I asked you this question last time. I'm pretty sure. But I want to ask it again because, like, <laughs> it seems like you've got like new perspectives and fresh eyes. Mm. So, if you had the one-time superpower of mental telepathy, and you could give a message to all 7.8 billion or whatever the number is now of humans on this planet, one short message, what would that message be? Stay grounded, be humble, and get connected back to Mother Earth. Mm. Everything that we need is already given to us. Yeah. Everything, food, water, shelter, we have it all and love. Get back to the basics and everything will flourish around you. Yeah. Don't look out for the things that you think that you need. Yeah. Look for what you've got. Yeah. Rhonda Swan, thank you so much. That's really my pleasure. Really beautiful, amazing to talk to you. And no doubt there'll be a round three. I'm and sure. I'm looking forward to more ceremonies and yeah. whatever it else Let's is, bring it it together. is <laughs> that we do. See you in the TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you go uh, check out Rhonda Swan and the Unstoppable Branding Agency, and I'll see you next time back down the rabbit hole.